it's Erin with the Little Urban Farm and today I am out trying to figure out how I can do some intercropping. Uh, what is intercropping? Well, that is where you can plant different crops together so that they can take advantage of the timing that it takes for the fruit to produce. So for instance, I've got the broccoli and the cabbage here and the cauliflower. Those take a long time to produce. So I think I can take advantage of some of the area that is around them. Um, especially, you know, back here with the cabbages. There's quite a lot of space in there. So I think I'm, I'm looking at what I have left to get in. I've got my seeds here. Um, radishes are one of them. These will grow pretty fast. However, apparently they don't do as great with brassicas. So that kind of stops me from putting them in these beds, but I might be able to plant these over near the okra and behind the peas. They might get a little bit of shade, so I'm gonna have to really keep an eye on it, but my okra gets trimmed pretty well, so there might be some enough sunlight that gets through. I also have beets, and I'm wondering if I can plant some of the beets in along the cabbages. And if that doesn't work, I know that I definitely can do some of my leafy greens. So I've got some spinach seeds, I've got some arugula seeds, and some various lettuces. But I also have these window boxes down here. So I just cleared out that one. I'm clearing out this one. Uh, if you recall, I planted these with beans, and apparently this was not the best way to do beans because I didn't really get any. <laughs> Maybe one or two, and it was like, what am I going to do with one or two? So I am just pulling these right out, and I think I'm going to put some of my, my lettuce greens in here and get them started. We have a little bit of rain that I think is coming over the next few days, so I just wanted to get these in so that they can get settled. I pull these out I just kind of break up the the dirt and the roots I'm really sad this didn't work this goes on my list of uh, things that didn't work this season I think I talked to you guys about that before I sort of make a little list or at least a mental list of things that did not do as well as I had hoped this was definitely one of them I thought that, you know, beans don't need a ton of space. I thought they would do pretty well in this planter box, and it turns out mm, that was false. And I'm not sure what the deal is. I don't know if they dried out too much. That's possible. See, I'm just breaking this all up so that it's not in a giant clump. And um, then I can figure out what I'm gonna put in here. Like I said, probably some lettuces. I'm trying to figure out if I should put the spinach over here with the cabbage or if I should try to put some beets in in between. I just haven't looked up anything. The beets seem to work great within this scenario. You know, there's a lot of room in here. So I'm trying to figure that out as well. Maybe maybe that's good for the spinach. I don't know. If anybody has any, any suggestions for intercropping, let me know because this is... New to me, uh, I've done very little of it. In fact, you know, you'll remember in this bed I had the strawberries with my zucchini and that actually worked pretty well. So that's the kind of stuff I'm looking at. What, what will work and what won't work. I also have some area here that my poor tomatoes are kind of, it's the end of the season, you know, they're, <laughs> they've had it. <laughs> uh, I'm still pulling some, but they're small, so. I might have some room in here. I pulled one plant there. They look a hot mess, but you know, you can see right here, I've got a little bit of an area, not a huge spot, but some of the leeks are still in here as well. I don't know how well those did. I will have a few in here anyway. I don't know that I'll have a ton, but you know, I might be able to go ahead and take advantage of some of the space like right here. This is not too awful bad. That could be a spot for, say, radishes. Let's go look at the, the spot where I've got the peas planted. We can also see how many of those are coming up and if we need to get some more seeds started. But see, I've got a row behind the radishes 
or I mean behind the, the peas that there's not much growing there. I only worry about the shading, but I think, I mean, I keep the okra fairly cut, so it does provide enough sun to come through here. So this also might be a good spot for me to put something. It's just one line of something, but I'm thinking that maybe that's where I should put the radishes. It said that radishes do really, really well with peas because they can uh, give back some of the nutrients to the soil, some of the nitrogen. So I think for the radishes anyway, that might be the best place for them. I thought they could go in with the cabbage. I'm really disappointed. I thought they would be perfect for the cabbage. And apparently that is not the case. So at least with these, let's go ahead and grab the radishes. These are, let me see, seven to 14 days to germinate, depth of half an inch, spacing. Uh, why does it say 10 inches to one inch? I don't know, 10 inches seems like a lot. Um, but we'll just, we'll do a line and we'll, we'll space them out. Uh, I kind of wish my trellis wasn't here. This makes it hard to maneuver. <laughs> We're gonna go right here. I'm gonna make a well and we'll just drop them down in. I think that's gonna be the best way to do this. Every day I'm just trying to get something else out here if I can. I mean, that would give a nice long line of beets. So let's take a look at these guys. Okay, these are very small. And um, I'm just gonna go ahead and sprinkle them down the line in here. Tonight when that soaker hose goes on, they should get a little bit of water. Still have plenty of seeds left. So that's one short crop done. <laughs> now I gotta figure out these lettuces and these boxes up here. Ah, this is the fun of planning your garden is figuring out what goes where. I'm really excited though, because everything that I put in from the greenhouse seems to be doing really, really well. That makes me very happy. Okay, I've got a couple of different types of seeds here. I don't know that I'm gonna do a lettuce head because I don't know that they can sustain that. I think these are gonna be better for the leafy versions. So I've got, let me see, we've got a salad bowl blend. That's probably gonna be a good one. I have this one here, so easy lettuce. This is also probably uh, leafy lettuce. You can see what it is that I'm working on. So, so far these are three different kinds that I have. And some of these are seeds that have been given to me or I've gotten throughout the years. These are some that I bought this year on sale. These ones by M.I. Gardener. Somehow I got two of that one. Tango leaf lettuce. I'm not sure what that is. This one says it can overwinter, so that's a good choice. So I think right now, I think that is more of a head lettuce. We've already got a salad bowl, so I'm gonna hold that one. And I also gotta figure out these mustard greens. Oh, my arugula. Arugula has to go in one. I love arugula. Let me see if I have another one of those open somewhere. Oops, I'm dropping them. Pull out the spinach while I'm in here. Okay, looks like that's it. 
Okay, so these are the three that I'm gonna grow. These are both a salad bowl blend, but these are a little bit older seeds, so I wanna try to get these in and use them. Um, these are brand new this year and the only ones I have. I love arugula, and I believe this one should be. Summer plantings can be located in part shade to avoid bolting. So they don't, you want some heat in order for them to sprout, but if they get too much sun, they can bolt and that is not what you want. Bolting is where they basically go to seed and then the greens can be a little bit bitter. So you don't want that, but I think we're okay right now. We are now in the middle of September. So we should have enough time to get a little bit of heat on them. So they'll start and by October, hopefully it'll cool down just a hair. I've gone ahead and opened this one. This says seven to 10 days germination, only a quarter inch of planting depth. And plant spacing, it says six inches, rows 18. We don't have 18 between them. So I'm gonna go ahead and do two wells. And I think that'll be okay. Lettuce doesn't need a ton of space. At least not to get started. And if I need to space it out bigger later, I can. And I'm really bad about this stuff, guys. I don't necessarily do whatever the recommended distances are because I can come through and thin these later and then you can eat the microgreens. Also, because these seeds are a little bit older, sometimes it is good to give them a little bit more in case the germination rate is not as high. That happens as seeds get older. Sometimes the seeds just aren't as viable, especially the littler they are. Because these are pink, you can kind of see what I've done. They're still kind of hard to see, uh, but they're there. Yeah. Just in a line. And that's all I'm doing in these window boxes. I'm gonna lightly cover these. The soil is still a little bit wet and we're supposed to get a little rain over the next few days, so I'm not even gonna water these in. We're just getting them prepared. Here's one window box of lettuce done. Now let's uh, grab the next one. You say surface to the top one eighth of an inch a group of three seedlings every eight inches, row spacing 12. So again, I don't have that here, but we can space these out and eat the greens. But these are even lighter. These ones are not even a quarter of an inch down in. So we're gonna be very careful with these. Oops, and there goes the lid. That came right off. These are very tiny. See that? I, don't know. I think the best way for this is going to be to leave them in the seed packet and drop them. This is why some of the seed companies do what the last seed company did, and they dye them so you can see them. You can kind of just tip them out of the package and tap it with your finger, like I'm doing, and they'll fall out. still have another planting available in that one. So we're gonna loosely cover these. Very, very loosely. These again are a very little seed. This soil's a little bit drier as well. We'll leave this one be. And hopefully these should be pretty good to work with in here because we have beans growing in here, so hopefully there's a good balance of nitrogen in here. And nitrogen is, is what's good for your leafy greens, so. Well, I didn't get beans. Maybe they got my soil prepared. Oh, a lot of these came out. These ones are even smaller than the lettuce seeds.
think I'm gonna go ahead and do some spinach right here along the edge of the okra. That way I think this okra will give it a little bit of shade in case it is a little bit too hot. I might even be able to put a little bit in between, but I think this, this might work because these allow for just enough shade cover for spinach. Now this is a variety that says it doesn't matter. In fact, it said this is a distant cousin of spinach. So it's not a true spinach anyway. Um, no early bolting. It's heat tolerant. Okay, so I've got right here, I'm just doing, again, I'm making a well that goes all the way down here. It says to plant these every three inches. I'm going to go all the way down here. not say what depth to plant them. You gotta love when they do that. They give me the seed spacing but not the depth. Well, I guess we're gonna have to guess on this one. Now these are a uh, bigger seed because whatever this seed is, this New Zealand spinach, it's not a true spinach. So these are a little bit bigger. And I'm gonna go ahead and do about every three inches. And I guess the depth that I'm at, well, by the time I cover them will be about an inch. I hope that'll be good enough. So just going to reach over here. Move the camera a little bit. I don't know if you can see. I think I'm going to plant some in through here as well. We'll see how they do. It's my first time planting this, so I've planted spinach before, but not this this type. And it's not something I tend to try a lot because we get so hot here that it doesn't always make sense for me. Now heading over here to where we have the cabbage. These cabbages take anywhere from 70 to 100 days. So these are going to be very slow where a lot of these ones that I've grabbed here are more like 45 days. So I think what I'm going to do is one row in the middle here, one row down there, and I think one I'll do of beets and one I'm going to do of this pak choy, also known as bok choy. It's one of my favorites. So that's what I'm going to do in this bed. And I don't know if I'm going to film it guys because you it's the same thing every time just the depth changes a little bit. So I'll just go ahead and get these in real quick. And I think I'm also going to do these broccoli rob seeds. I love broccoli rob. It's a little bit different from regular broccoli and cauliflower. And I think for this one I'm going to go down the center of the broccoli and the cauliflower because those have a longer um longer time to mature well not really 74 days i wonder if they'll do okay in here well we're gonna try it that's the worst that can happen they don't grow <laughs> so let's go ahead and do what we've been doing and put a well right down the middle of these aisles here and we're gonna get them in the next thing I thought I would show you guys is these um, bendable poles that I bought to make my hoop house. Uh, the ones that I had before, if you watched my last video, I got them years ago and I've been looking to get some more and this was a product that I found on Amazon. You get six of them and they're short, there's two different sizes. You can get just the poles or you can get the poles with the extenders. I went ahead and got the extenders. So I bought some um, cloth to cover as well, which I'd like to cover these because I want to make sure that no cabbage worms or anything get in here and tear these up before they really get started. So this is how they come packaged. They came packaged like little hula hoops and it took me a while to figure out how to get them undone. <laughs> you have to kind of push down to make it flat and then pull it out and see oh, <laughs> if it doesn't smack you in the face. Um, then you've got 
your pole. So in this bed, I've already done two. So I just, I'm gonna do four for stability. If I get this one. Ah, they're not that easy to get at that. Okay, we're gonna go halfway. This is kind of my halfway point. This one needs to come over a little bit. Now, you just put these in the holes. Bend it. And pull it down into this one. It does seem to be bending the supports a little bit. I don't think that's gonna matter. There we go. See? So I'm gonna do another one over here, and then I gotta go get my cloth and see if we can uh, go ahead and cover these. So now that I have the hoops all set up, I've got four on this one and four on that one. This is the floating row cover that I bought for these that I am hoping will fit. And let's see, these are, this is 10 inches wide by 50 foot long. So I don't remember what I paid for this, maybe 20 bucks. Um, might even been slightly less, I'm not sure. But I'm gonna have to spread this out and cut it to size and then kind of manage it over these poles and put something down to secure it. I have spread it out longer than the bed because you want it to hang down in the fronts. And now we're gonna go ahead and cut. holes that I had right here. I just pulled those out. I'm going to use those just to kind of hold this down like that. The bigger ones from the tomatoes would be nice, but for now this will work. I'm going to pull it taut. Somewhere I've got clips. I don't know where those clips are, and honestly right now I'm not sure that it necessarily matters, but I'm going to use the planter boxes on the end here to kind of secure these on the ends. this up against here so it holds it down the edges I'm just gonna wrap around a little bit here too put them underneath the planter box this is just so it doesn't fly away and it holds it down so that things can't get up in there other than what's already there I mean let's be honest there's probably already some bugs in there but that's okay fix it wherever it's not secure. Again, for now, I'm gonna use these planter boxes as weight and the pole over here. Like I said, once I get the longer poles out of the tomatoes, I'll probably replace that just so it goes down a longer length. But for now, this works. I think I cut this one a little bit long, but that's okay. I'd rather have it too long and too short and waste the fabric. It's looking pretty good. I'll probably just ball that up a little bit. But see, that's gonna do really nicely. Now you could cut up the middle here, create a little doorway if you want to. I think I'm gonna leave it like this. And this will be good for them, I think. They'll get moisture from the drip hose, and uh, I think they're gonna get some humidity in here. This might provide a hair of some shade. I don't really know with these. It's considered a cover, so I'm not sure. It also, because it's white, might let in a lot of light, but they're doing fine so far without anything, so this should be okay too. And there you go. That's what it looks like. I uh, slowly will probably grab some of my planter boxes and put them on the ends like I did here. 
just because they hold it down really, really good. Uh, you can see I did the same thing here with the ones that are the lettuces. So I only have, I think, two other planter boxes that have the basil in it. So as the basil sort of lets down, wears down, um, I'll go ahead and probably do another planter right there of something. So I also could probably move that basil there, but what I did is I put the drip hose across it. So that's actually getting water where it is right now, and I'm hoping that that could help keep the deer out if they come. I don't know if that is enough to block them. Sometimes they don't like to step over things. Right now they can probably still get in through here, but I have plenty of fabric that I can do at least one more. I don't know what that's going to look like yet. Still considering a sixth bed. Um, I also have this little one here that I created that looks terrible, I know. Um, which I don't think that's going to be big enough anyway. That's just for now. So once the okra stops, this bed may also get turned into something more like that. Uh, if you're planting some different crops, especially if you're doing any intercropping, please share with me. I'm new to that and I would really love to learn as much about it as I can. I'm going to see if any of this works this year. 